Hello and welcome to MaxSurf Webinar 8, video 2 on motions prediction using SeaKeeper. We've taken a look at the basic theory, now let's see how we can set up and use the program in practice. We first open our MaxSurf model and choose the number of sections that we want to use along the length of the model. And because the strip theory method uses conformal mapping to map a nominal section to the actual section, we need to choose the number of mapping terms that we should use to model our sections. We will see in a minute how we check those sections. We can analyze monohulls or catamarans, and we need to set the demi hull spacing of catamarans. But you should be aware that you cannot model trimarans, semi submersibles, or swaths uh, with Seakeeper. The swaths are a catamaran, of course, but because of the very small water plane area, it's not possible to get accurate results for that type of vessel using the approach in Seakeeper. As well as the geometry of the hull, we need to define the mass distribution. Seakeeper lets you input that as a radius of a mass radius of gyration or a gyradius, and it's typically entered as a percentage of the length in beam. So that's a non dimensionalized version. The normal gyradius is the square root of the mass moment of inertia divided by the mass, and uh, we then calculate that as a percentage of length in beam. For the pitch motions and the longitudinal direction, that value is typically about 25%. And for the transverse motions uh, in the beam direction, that uh, gyro radius is typically 35 to 40%. There is a calculation spreadsheet included with Seakeeper. If you go to C Program Files, Max Surf, and uh, Utilities, you can find it there. You also need to enter in some mass information, the center of the uh, gravity and its vertical location. That's used in the response calculation, so that's very important. And it is important that the VCG you enter does give you a positive GM so that the vessel is stable. For the damping considerations, there are really two component parts to that. First of all, the heave and pitch damping. That's damping that occurs due to the vessel's generation of waves on the free surface as it moves up and down. Uh, in general, the method calculated internally by Seakeeper is going to do a good job for you. Uh, so you only need to enter in a heave pitch factor as an additional damping factor if you uh, want to add more damping compared to what the standard calculation gives you. That value is calculated automatically for you for catamarans because it uh, works out the coupling due to the uh, position of the demi hull off the center line. In the roll motions, that's a different methodology. We calculate roll damping due to viscous effects, so that's not really modeled by the strip theory itself. And so we want to add in a total amount of roll damping due to different effects on damping. They could be roll suppression devices like fins or bilge keels, and they could also be variations in roll damping due to forward speed or large motions. The typical range of damping value here would be in the range of 0.05 to 0.2 for the roll damping factor. So notice that that's the total roll damping, whereas for heave and pitch it's just an additional value if you enter some. Uh, next month we'll take a look at the details of how we calculate uh, the roll damping more accurately, but the paper by ICADA is a source of a good uh, methodology which has been followed up by others over the years. We'll see also uh, in one of the later videos how we can use the roll decay simulation to calibrate our damping values. The table on the right hand side here gives an indication of some typical damping factors at different speeds, the sorts of values you might see for a typical vessel. We also need to do some setup with respect to the type of analysis method. Uh, if we've got an immersed transom, there's an option to include the transom terms to correct for the low pressure area around the immersed, immersed transom. Uh, we can also choose different methods for calculating the added, added resistance. There's a couple of different methods there. One if we're just looking at head seas and another if we're looking at uh, oblique seas. And, uh, the Salveson method is pretty good for most hull shapes, the Gritzmer and Birkelmann methods more for cargo ships. And uh, there's also a couple of options there on the wave force. To calculate the response at different locations on the vessel, we enter in a number of remote locations. Each of those is defined as a distance from the zero point and uh, Seakeeper will calculate the distance from the center of gravity for you. And there's some additional coefficients that we should enter for each of those points to define other properties like uh, the friction values. 
if we're looking at accommodation locations or bridge locations, we might also want to enter in the exposure time to define how long uh, people can be in that location uh, for the purposes of motion sickness calculations. Then for the actual vessel calculations themselves, of course, we need to know how fast the vessel is going because that affects motions. So we can enter in the range of speeds. Uh, Seakeeper works best in the range of fruit number from 0 to 0.8. So uh, for slender vessels, you can go up to the higher end of the range around 0.8. For squatter vessels, you probably wouldn't want to go quite that high. Uh, but note that uh, Seakeeper doesn't actually calculate the dynamic motions effects due to forward speed uh, so you need to be careful with uh, planning craft also you need to enter in the headings the standard convention for uh, ship motions is that head seas are at 180 degrees and follow seas at zero degrees and then of course we need to choose a sea state there are a number of different sea state definitions or spectrum definitions uh, Brett Schneider, John Swap, DNV and others, ITTC. Each of those is a definition of the distribution of energy in the wave at different wave frequencies. So most sea states will have most of the energy concentrated around its dominant wavelength with a smaller amount of energy from low, fre uh, high low frequency waves and a, a little bit more energy from the higher frequency waves. So the whole sea state of course is composed of a whole range of frequencies. So that's all the data that we need to enter into uh, Seakeeper and the next video we'll see how we do that inside the program. Thanks for watching.